a chilly morning and my Ferrari 328 GTS. Uh, I haven't intentionally been putting off this video after the full mechanical restoration by Donnie Calloway. Um, we've just had real work to do, frankly. <laughs> uh, and here we are. We finally got the car. Everything is good. We are in the canyons. And in this video, we are going to see if I have spent my money wisely. Yeah. Uh, both on car and on a uh, mechanic. Uh, Zach has never even been in this car. No, no, I have. You've been in it? Yeah, w once, like okay. two months ago. Or okay, you were in ago. it, but you've never driven it. Correct. And you've never driven any 308 or 328. That's true. Okay, yeah. so Zach will have an objective review of, uh, of what it's like to drive this car, and am I mentally just a child who wanted the thing from my childhood? Right, and then or I'll be seeking a job after I give my opinion. Right, or is it is it actually good? Um, if you missed uh, the last videos in this car, basically, um, a lot was wrong with it. Oh, also, in this video, uh, rather than a traditional ad, our friends at Pelodi Shoes, uh, makers of some very fine driving sneakers, they're not racing shoes, although Pelodi does make a racing shoe, but they make driving sneakers. They're like casual shoes uh, that are optimized for driving with a rounded heel yes. and, and a sole that's meant for driving, and they look really good. They're, they're really uh, 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 aesthetically pleasing driving sneaker. They are bringing you the Pelodi pedal cam so you can watch Zach and I's footwork while driving the 328. Um, if you haven't been paying attention, we did a complete mechanical restoration on this car. Everything from the engine, the ignition system, the fuel injection system. The computer system the, got, it was refreshed. The, new the, bushings, new bolts, like. New, oh. new shocks, new control arms, uh, new brake hardware, not just pads and rotors, but the new calipers, a new brake booster, a new brake master cylinder. You kept the block, the interior, and the body, basically. Yeah, yeah. and even the heads were, like, decarbonized. Jeez, like, okay. Like, everything you can do, and so, although this is a 43,000-mile car uh, that's a little cosmetically scruffy, it's clean, it's nice, but it's not winning... 100 points in a concourse, and I like it that way because I want to drive it. Right, then you can drive um, without worrying about it. Right. The idea is that uh, mechanically, this is about as close to driving a showroom new car as as we will find. Yeah. And so um, we're going to have a go. Um, can we just put the top up? This is a GTS, so it's got the thing. Tops at home. The GTS I drove, mechanical top. No. Automa no? No. What, oh, the 296 GTS. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. You you can put... You, one could put the roof behind the seats here. One could. One could. Donnie one who can. is shorter than Donnie's you. Donnie's 5'8". He could. I have <laughs> to decide, is the top coming or is the top staying? Gotcha. So you have to commit. All right. So I like this car so much better with the top off than with the top on that I elected to leave it at home today. If I was going on a road trip, I'd take it. But... Uh, no. So, remember, dog leg first gear. Yep. Car's got a, a pretty light clutch. Transverse V8, 3.2 liter. Very Rev. light car, about 3,000 pounds. Rev's super smooth. Rev's Idle's really smooth. Super smooth. So, one thing we noticed is that when Donnie replaced all the vacuum hoses, among other things, it really felt like it unlocked power. So it actually feels quite a bit faster than before. Wow. Double wishbone suspension, so really good ride. Manual steering, kind of dead on center, but when you load it up, it's nice. And it sounds good. It's very comfortable from this side. Yeah. Like, the damping's nice and the seat's nice and it's not it's not real stiff you wouldn't expect it to be yeah no these cars from the wall. 80s are not set up for to be stiff they're supposed to ride well yeah what is that? what a smooth engine wow like it has some of that inline six you know sewing machine like quiet to it yeah Ferrari V8s. Third gear is the happy place for this road. You might notice I shuffle steer this car, whereas I don't shuffle steer a lot of other cars. 
it seems to like that. I seem to like it because I get better leverage on the wheel than than leaning it all the way in. So well, this has that old Ferrari wheel angle that's kind of like a bus. Yeah. So out here, you don't have much leverage. All right. Well, so what do you notice are the differences? Because well, you drove it before when it was just made the, of the shocks and bushings and suspension stuff make it so tight. Before it was kind of like jiggly, and people who people kept telling me, "Oh, that's because it's a GTS. It doesn't have the chassis rigidity. <laughs> if it was, if you bought a GTB, a hardtop, then you know you wouldn't have that, right?" And I didn't ever really. I ne I kind of was like, okay, but I never totally bought that. And so when we did the bushings. And like, yes, there's a little bit of lack of chassis rigidity because there's no roof, but it's not jiggly. The rattles are gone. It's tight. Well, know. and no amount of chassis rigidity is going to make up for Bad rubber bushings. bushings that have completely disintegrated. Like you had some where the bolt was resting yeah. on the housing. No, I mean, it was not good. It was done. And there was some stuff with this car that was due to negligent maintenance. And there was other stuff that it was just 35 years old. And so sometimes, even if you get a, a nice expensive one with really low miles, you know, it, it might need that stuff anyway. Right, because the rubber's gonna dry out and crack. You know, a lot of it's due to age, not just pressure. Right. So now the road, what is all this stuff in the road? Oh, someone was drifting up here, I see. So Crazy kids. the car's not really optimized for this road in particular, because it's a little more tight and technical, and the car really likes open sweepers, it really likes, you know, 80, 90, 100 miles an hour on the highway. But uh, it still feels really nice, light, good ride, agile. And just, it's an old car, it's a classic, but generally very pleasant. You know, it's smooth, you get that little burble. Good pedal spacing for that Pelodi pedal cam. I love the heel and toe action. You've got to give it a smooth, deliberate blip and a smooth, deliberate gear change. Yeah, you can't you can't smash the gears. No, it, it, it likes a it likes a a firm but like smooth gear change. It doesn't like you know quarter mile pulls. Right. You know where you're just like ripping off shifts, but. Everything now after this uh, after this major service, it does really feel like it's in harmony. And does it feel faster to you? Like you drove up here on the highway, yeah. does that have yeah, more pull yeah. and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, the engine revs freer. Um, everything about it does it feels like it makes more power. Um, it's smoother, it starts uh, it starts quicker. Um, it's really nice. I'm going to find a, a good U-turn here. One thing that kind of sucks about this car, because of the, the manual steering and all that, the um, the turning radius sort of blows. Um, it's but, but because it's old, we have good ground clearance and sidewall. Yes, so that is true. you can actually pull off in the dirt. That is true. And then you Although, can, uh, because it's my car and I'm a little bitch about... Oh, down there is actually better. Hang on. But like overall, I'm just super happy with this thing. I don't, I'm not expecting modern supercar performance. It's an old car not. and, and like, it's just, I want to take it on road trips. I'm literally driving it to Arizona on, on Friday morning. Yeah, that's so like, what it's that's for. That's what I want. I mean, it, people ran these in like, you know, the old cannonball, right? Well, that was the big thing. Once I got it back from Donnie. And it felt, the suspension was so much more settled and it felt so much faster. All of a sudden, David Deem and Doug Turner's story about running one of these in the Cannonball and going 3207 felt so much more Made plausible. Made more sense. You're yeah, like, I was there's like, no way. Oh, in the beginning, I was like, they're full of shit. But or like, they're insane because of how loose it felt. Like, how could they do that? Correct. Now, when the, the car is so happy at 110 miles an hour... That it's totally plausible that they did that for that long. So you drive. I'm trying to like find my uh, footing here. Yeah, like see that everything is to the right. <laughs> it's so far to the right that my right foot was on the clutch thingy and it was the brake. Oh, that's hilarious. To be honest, um, 
no discredit to Peloti shoes, which are excellent driving shoes. Most of the time I drive this car, I drive it barefoot. And the reason I do that is because when I drive it barefoot, I can tuck my left foot behind the clutch pedal, which Ooh, has lots wow. of room. Yeah. To like when I'm cruising, On like I can, really long trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I drove to Pebble Beach, I did that. Yeah, but this so, is this is you know my I think the clutch here is in line with the center of the street. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. everything is off to the right. I mean, All right. they didn't. You know, I they know. barely give no, a no. fuck now. Of they course. didn't think they gave a fuck then about your feet. Nice. So the only thing is, like, just, you know, just drive, you're fine. But just uh, with, on the one-two shift, yeah. don't take your ga- your accelerator foot completely off the gas. Give, just hold it a little bit on the gas in between that gear change. It'll go smoother. Okay. Just on the one-two. All right. Other than that, drive. Have fun. steering wheel it's like five inches further at the top yeah. than the bottom ferrari was like what are what is this word ergonomics what does <laughs> yeah. that mean that's not er, is this like an espresso sounds Stud- like a german word study right? of the espresso yeah there you go we study the romance yeah. not uh, the technical uh, adjustment on the ergonomics so what do you think first first impression all right first impression steering is heavy once you get into uh, a little bit of the turn like right there, it's yeah. like you go 90 degrees and then there's like a lot of weight to it. Yeah. Um, the spring on the, on the throttle is wonderful. It's like, it's it's not too light, it's not too heavy and it feels, it is, I mean, it's throttled by, not by wire, it's like an actual wire. No, it's like by cable. an actual cable. It's throttled by so it feels wo- so nice. woven cable probably. Brakes feel good. Right? Brand new brakes are nice. Brand new brakes. It's are nice good having thing. that three-two shift in a straight line. It I is. Think. You know, it really is. I, I think I used to think the dog leg thing was silly, but yeah, you're out of first really quickly. It feels so light. It's. I mean, even though the controls are kind of slow by modern standards, like the way it it wants to change direction. Just because it doesn't... What does this thing weigh? Like 24 So pounds? here's the thing. Of, no, it's somewhere between 29 and 31. Wow. And it's impossible to figure out exactly what it is because Ferrari was so full of shit. They would quote dry weights. Oh, yeah. They still and, do that. Like, it was just... it. it I tried... It's, it's like impossible to figure it out. This is the weight of the car on the moon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it feels... But like... It, it feels light. You know, it really does. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it feels small, which is really nice. I mean, yeah, man, it, it hustles. Uh, the ride is so wonderful. It's got a little float to it. Yeah. But, man, this thing will be comfortable on a really long trip. It's so, so good on the highway. It's so comfortable on the highway. That's why you can just you can just stick it at yeah. 110 miles an hour, and it's so settled. The steering wheel angle is so funny to me. Yeah. It took them like almost a hundred years or <laughs> sixty years to figure that out. Yeah, so weird. I mean, you know, this is way out here. It's then, like a panel van. Yeah, it, it really is. That's why you shuffle steer because it just makes more sense. It's like a drafting. To do it that way. It, it's a drafting desk. And the F40, by the way, has the same steering. Yeah, rack. I know. <laughs> they didn't change it for a really long time. But I just like. I love how you never forget that you're interacting with a machine, like a machine machine. And yeah. and it's it's a really precise machine. It feels like that. And it sounds really precise. That engine feels so tight, small displacement. Um, every shifter should be gated. I don't know what everyone else is doing. Why why did anyone everyone should have copied this and stuck with it forever. That little click clack. I mean, I just want another excuse to shift. Oh, well, like, so nice. I have as much fun going slow in this as I have going triple the speed in new stuff, sometimes more. Yeah, I mean, there's just you, there's a lot more interaction happening, there's more sounds, and obviously there's there's an occasion to this, for sure. There's yeah. just, like, that, you know, je ne sais quoi thing of, like, you're in an old Ferrari. This is what we stared at and dreamt about as kids yeah you're a connoisseur yeah. <laughs> and also you can you can run a line 
in your lane here because it's small. That's the Miata ability. Yeah. yeah, you can actually turn a normal corner into like a racing line because it, it, it is so narrow. Do you know the width of this? No. Small. I know it's small. <laughs> no, the German would know how wide his car I don't, is. I don't know. I barely know the fucking horsepower. You just know it's this right, thing. though. I don't give a shit. Like, I, I, I care that it's lightweight, comfortable, it feels like it goes fast if yeah, you hammer down. it does. And it's fun to engage with as a piece of machinery. It's did you just really have to fun. try to remember where fourth was? Yes, I, I did. That. Yes, I did. You were like, wait a minute, where's fourth? But then I looked and I was like, oh, I actually have a lot of revs left. Yeah, it I goes don't need to shift. You know, it goes, to, yeah, it goes to eight. This is amazing. God, I mean, it's, this is why they continue to be one of my favorite car companies. You know, they've been doing this for a long time. And now we can, un now that I understand what this car was like supposed to feel like, I realize that a lot of people are very wrong about these. You know, like... Yeah, there's a lot of, in every car community, there's a lot of like what I call forum knowledge. Yeah. Where it's just something breaks enough on a lot of them that the, the knowledge gets passed on of like, ah, they do that. Yeah. That's just what they do. No, you, it's just things fall apart. They don't. They didn't come out of the factory like that. And there can be a cascading effect of not doing stuff right, like we learned with Donnie in the dumb fuel filter. Uh, oh, we need to get three different filters. If you no, if you don't, changing the fuel filter in this car is particularly annoying because you have to drop the fuel tank to do it. Oh God! So people get That's lazy and they don't do it. <laughs> what happens then is it puts the fuel pump under more strain pulling more voltage. It pulls more voltage through that circuit board. That's what Then that. the circuit board melts. And then it causes all other kinds of problems. Whereas if you sucked it up and did the fuel filter, you wouldn't have hurt the fuel pump, oh you God. wouldn't have melted the board, and the rest of the car wouldn't run like shit. Wow. So it's this cascading effect of this car has a certain thing it needs, and if you don't do it, it sucks. Yeah. And, and it's so, a bummer that the thing it needs is kind of complicated because you have to right. drop the fuel tank, which is, that's a pain in the ass. Yeah. And it's expensive. Yeah. And also, like, when I first started driving supercars, you could still get a 360 or a 430 or a 550 with a manual. So those were very engaging mechanical yeah. things. And so this car felt slow and clunky by comparison because you're still engaging with those machines. You know, oh, these 328s and 308s, eh, whatever. But now... Supercars aren't that anymore. They're hybrids. They're right. paddle shifters. Yeah. They're digital. And they're fast as hell. Weird. But it's not engaging with a machine in the same way anymore. So time marching on has helped me appreciate the engagement of the machine with this car. Yeah, it's for anyone, like, all you have to do is drive a car that has is more analog and a little bit older, and I think you'll feel what we're talking yeah. about. There's just more sensations, and it's more rewarding yeah. uh, to not have. Like, the, the 296 had a yaw control, like new yaw control, and new it had a whole new ABS technology yeah. and the hybrid technology. There's just so much going on that, that's just you know driving you on the road, and well, this and is you, just with, you. With 830 horsepower, you need that stuff. A right. lot of drivers do. With 270 horsepower... How much trouble are you going to get in in this car? Yeah. Not, you know, not that much. That's very true. And so, and so, that's why the size of our roads. This road that we just drove on is the same as when this car was built. So, the cars have gotten bigger. The cars have gotten faster. The roads are the same. But, um, you know, that's why I I'm very happy with this car overall. Not only is it mechanically incredibly sound right now and really fun to engage with, the ride, the handling, and the braking. Mm -hmm are really nice yeah they're great yeah there's a there's like a softness to all of them but yeah. it's all working in balance yeah. and it's really nice so it it really t teaches me that a there's still a lot of value in cars like this if you're into if you're into cars the 308 and the 328 are very engaging driving experiences um for relative ferrari money you know not not that much they're rapidly becoming appreciated not just in terms of money but in terms of literal the word appreciation by people mm -hmm. um they're fu really fun to use like i'm literally doing a 700 mile road trip in this car this weekend and i'm super stoked on it 
Um, you just smile the whole time. It's just great. It's just great. People love it. You're no longer a snob when you're driving it. You're not like a douche anymore. You people actually smile and wave. They're not like, ugh, Ferrari guy. You know, it's cool. And and Donnie, who is out of his mind, you know, and he keeps finding crazy shit in the car and, you know, oh, we got to fix this. We got to fix this. You know, it cost me a lot of money. I probably, I probably gave Donnie $30,000, maybe even more. And that's probably not even market retail value. He knew I was going to do this very thing. <laughs> and so I got a deal. Right. Um, but now that the car is good to go, I really should just need oil changes for the next 10 years. That's awesome. And with 43,000 miles and... You can drive it till it has 90 just, and the value won't change. What, I, yeah. Whatever. I mean, even if it goes down a little bit, like, whatever. I'm going to have, like, miles per gallon, baby. So, um... Very, very So cool. you approve? Good yeah, car. totally approve. And it's just... Everyone should check their bushings in any car they right. own. Right. If the car's it over, so much. car's over twenty years old, it's gonna need bushing. Yeah, straight up, it change. It's a game changer. Absolutely, total game changer. So, shout out to Donnie Ferrari underscore nineteen sixty six on Instagram. If you got an old Ferrari seventy five to to ninety five, he and you're in California, he's your guy. Yep. And um, do a PPI. <laughs> Absolutely. It might have be. someone like Donnie do a PPI on <laughs> whatever car you're shopping for. Yeah, yeah. Because I probably could have saved a little bit of money on this one, but. Cars can broken cars can be fixed, but triple black is triple black forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Zach approves, and we'll see you guys later. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store, or go to offtherecord.com/tst.